You ever wonder how to keep your quail watered in the wintertime? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video, but to give you a hint, this is not the answer. All right, get back. Back, good boy, wait. Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. As you can see here in southwest Missouri, it is a cold, snowy day. I actually kind of like that because we haven't had a good snow yet. Well, haven't had a good snow this season yet, and uh, I kind of like to have a good snow every once in a while. But I thought it would be a good time to go ahead and address how to keep your quail watered in the wintertime because I know that's a question I get comes up quite a bit. I've addressed it in previous videos, but I've got a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new viewers, so thought I'd get it answered in this question or this uh, video today. So let's get to it. Let's go get the quail watered. Okay, as you probably already know, you can't use my, well, I can anyway, use my automatic watering system in the wintertime because it just freezes up. It's haven't found a good way to keep that warm keep it from freezing up without running like extension cords and heaters and those kinds of things out, which I don't. So I do switch that out in the wintertime. Uh, one thing I will caution about before I get into it is you really want to stay away from using open crocks or, you know, the mason jar waters like I showed in the video intro. Uh, they, they really don't make a good solution for quail in the winter. The uh, mason jar waters, the problem with those is that the water in the tray freezes up so fast it doesn't let the rest of the water come down through. So it's really not a good solution for them. And the crocks, open bowls, the quail are kind of stupid. They'll jump right in that water. They get it filthy for one thing, but the bigger concern I have with it is they jump in that water, they get wet, then they get out and they get on the wire and they sit down on that wire and they freeze to the wire. So when they stand up, rips all the feathers, some of the skin off of them. And that's the only time I've ever had a bird that really has died from the cold or had any kind of major in, um, injuries or any of that kind of stuff, any kind of big problems with the cold is when they got in the water, got wet, and then froze to the uh, wire itself. And I just gotta think that's a horrible, horrible thing for them to go through. So I've switched out of that. Don't use open bowls, don't use open crocs, don't use the uh, tray waters. I'll show you what I use, works great for me. Okay. This is actually very similar to my feeders. This is a, uh, it's an old ice cream bucket is what it is. And uh, the nice thing about this is it's got a lid on it. So you, know, you can just see, I just cut holes in the side here. They stick their heads through to get the water, um, but it's got a lid on it. So it keeps them from getting in the water itself. It keeps the water much, much cleaner. You don't have to worry about it getting fouled up and nasty. And the other thing I really like about it is this thing's pretty sturdy. It's a little bit sturdier than most of the, uh, um, oh, like the Rubbermaid style containers and those kinds of things, little cheap food containers that I use for the feed. So I can kind of pry the sides apart a little bit and then I can just pop out, pop the ice out. Toss that down, fill it back up with some water. They'll come out and get a drink here in just a minute whenever I get in there and check on them. And uh, really that's all there is to watering them. And with as cold as it is, that stuff will freeze up eventually. It'll take a little while, but it won't take that long. So I'll come back out again in the afternoon, do the same thing, pop the ice out, put some water in there for them so they'll have some water in the afternoons as well. Let's get a uh, check and see how they're doing over here. Can't open that with my gloves on. Yeah, but it looks like they're doing just fine. Yep, everybody's fine. All right, so pretty quick, short video. But again, I you know stay away from the open bowls because I have had problems with those. Again, water, you know, they just jump in there, they get wet, and then get stuck to it. It's kind of like sticking your tongue to a frozen pole, that kind of thing. Just a bad experience all the way around. Your quail, I mean, and again, I've had a couple of quail that have gotten in the water, gotten wet, gotten stuck to the wire, and then they end up dying from their injuries. So it's just bad all the way around. So anyway, um, again, just a quick short video to uh, show you what I use in the wintertime for my new subscribers. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. As always, God bless. 